exhibition galleries through there. It's been a while since we sat down and spoke so there is like a bookish thing that I want to catch you up on because I'm just like really happy about it um, so I'm gonna make a cup of tea and then we'll sit down and we'll chat books hello okay um please ignore the um, extremely holy jumper I am in my pajamas. Uh, let me just close that window actually. Okay, window is closed. Tea has been made. Pajamas are on. Because I have nothing else on for the rest of the day. So I picked comfort as, as I should, as you should. Um, so I just kind of want to do like a little catch up. And the main thing that I wanted to tell you about is that I started a book club and half of me was like, yes, this is the best idea ever. And then the other half of me is like, why would you do that? You have horrendous anxiety. Why would you decide to do something like that? Which would mean you have to speak to people that you don't really know and organize things. And yeah, so I do have to say that part of doing it was like a challenge for myself um, to go outside my comfort zone and you know, to put myself out there. And I think it's easy to fool people that you can, that you are a confident person, especially when you're like a trained performer, like I am. Um, it can be quite easy to come across as confident. And like, especially as a teacher as well, like people just expect you to be a confident person, but uh, I'm really, really not. Hello. Um, I'm incredibly shy and, uh, find socializing really, really hard. So I was a bit nervous about that because it meant just chatting with people that I didn't really know. Uh, but it turns out that they are the nicest people and I want to chat to them so much. Um, so we had the meeting a couple of nights ago and I decided to do it on Zoom so that it wasn't only people who were based in Glasgow, that you could be anywhere. And two of the people that were there both have really really good youtube channels when it comes to books so there's renee from so i read this book and ben green from is it benjamin journal i think is his youtube channel um anyway if you're not following them and watching their videos then what are you doing <laughs> you you should because they're both just oh, such gorgeous people inside and out and I mean, maybe I'm a bit biased because we seem to have quite similar taste in books, but um, yeah, they just make really enjoyable content. I could listen to Renee just chatting all day and Ben's content is just stunning every single time. So that's a treat if you don't already follow them, like you're welcome. We had the first meeting and then there was Lydia who was there as well, who she doesn't have a YouTube uh, channel, but she is on Instagram and it is just so considered and thoughtfully curated and just really beautiful yeah so the book the first book for um this book club uh was higher ground by Anne Costelling and let me tell you that is not an enjoyable book and I kind of knew going into it that it wasn't going to be like a light easy read um but my god it was relentless it was exhausting but it was so clever. I loved it so much. Um, so we have our protagonist, Rezi, and she's living in Berlin, mother of four, an artist, a writer, 
and she has her husband there as well, Sven, and he's a painter. And the start of this book is like the aftermath of a publication of a, a piece of her writing. And in it, she kind of dares to tell the truth about her middle-class friends and their life. And, oh my God, the whole book was like, just, oh, I don't, I can't even put it into words. It was just heavy. And then it was even heavier when you realize like the majority of the book she's writing to her 14 year old daughter. And it's just like a lot, like, you already have so many issues when you're that age as a teenager, my God. But trying to deal with like your mother's justification for what she's done and how she's gone about her life and everything is just a lot. But I would recommend it because I think it's just a really, really clever and bold book. Anka Stelling has gone and created a protagonist who is so unapologetically herself. She is not made likable or easy or palatable in any way. She is using her words and they are so sharp. It is, she is out for blood with her words in this book. And she is just kind of revealing the hypocrisies um, that we all know to exist. Uh, when it comes to classism and privilege and yeah be prepared to feel exhausted and also maybe like a little bit uncomfortable when you're reading it because you do have to kind of face a lot of hard truths i think the consensus was within the book club that um not enjoyable but very well done i'm kind of glad that it wasn't just an easy read that i picked for like our first meeting. This month's theme is going to be uh, Women in Translation. Although Higher Ground is also translated from the German by... I can't remember her name right now. That's so bad. Is it Lucy? We still need to do translated work for Women in Translation Month. You can't not. So um, I picked a couple of titles and then people voted and we're going to be reading Hurricane Season. Yeah, I think again, not an enjoyable read so much, but like a good read. Um, I've heard that it's basically just like a wall of text that you're thrown at. So that's going to be interesting. And I'm honestly just like loving having this little community of people who we have like a little WhatsApp group and our Zoom call and it's just so nice to make connections and like I said before like I really don't find that easy I'm terrified of people so it's really nice to be making connections with people who have similar interests and are just genuinely very lovely warm souls um I've read a few things recently that I really loved so higher ground was even though it wasn't like a light easy enjoyable read like i really loved it it was so clever and well done and like she like fucking committed to the tone she committed to the message she committed to that protagonist and i i bowed down to that that was a bold move um and then i read bluettes by maggie nelson and everybody who told me i was gonna love that book you were absolutely right um i think that maggie nelson's one of those authors that I put off reading because I know I'm going to love her work so much and it's almost like, Ben and I were actually saying this, it's like we can't handle um, just the emotional response we might have to the work. Like It's like you're not prepared for how much you're going to love it, if you know what I mean. So Maggie Nelson's definitely one of those writers for me, but I read Bluettes and it was so stunning and so comforting and so thoughtful Ugh, my fingers like really shaking can you see that oh my god it's like twitching uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna switch hands because <laughs> that's not good <laughs> yeah i really love bluettes because it was like really fragmented every kind of it was like there was a thought and it was numbered and then it would go to the next one and the next one and the next one. There's just loads of these thoughts, almost like a journal entry on the color blue, but it was quite tangential and went off to places that led to others, but everything was connected and it had this really 
like personal vein running through it and I really 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 liked it. It's kind of one of those like unclassifiable texts like is it poetry, is it memoir, is it non-fiction and I feel like Maggie Nelson does that you know um thoughtful personal writing really re like better than anyone else that I've read um oh, I just I love her so much. Last week, Jessica Andrews' new book came out. It's her second book. And um, I devoured that in like one day. I just sat and read it all in one go. It was very um, heavy on the imagery and it took you from London to Barcelona to Paris. And it was really kind of like tumultuous and it was like dripping a bit heavy in imagery in some places like I felt like it was maybe slightly overdone but then at the same time like now knowing the protagonist and getting to feel like how emotionally like uh led she is and how everything feels like the end of the world or the best thing ever and just how in her head she is like I feel like the overuse of imagery like almost makes sense to be honest. I didn't even say the title of that book, it's called Milk Teeth and it has a gorgeous cover that I absolutely love. I did buy the hardback which I don't usually do but the reason I did is because Jessica Andrews debut um, Salt Water which I actually have, I'm going to show you because it's so beautiful. Um, bear with me, I got it here on one of my shelves. Just quickly show you so I actually have a lot of books. I need to go through a lot of these and get rid of some, but uh, Salt Water is right here. And yeah, look how gorgeous that book is. Um, so this one, I would say, is definitely one of your thinky women trying to figure out who she is and why she is and where she wants to be. Like, it's definitely one of those narratives. Um, I read this, I want to say I read it at the start of 2020 and yeah, I would recommend this if you, you know, if you like the thinky woman kind of narrative, this might be for you. Jessica Andrews writing is definitely very lyrical, heavy on the imagery. It is shimmering and scintillating and it definitely evokes a sense of place so easily and so well. So we have two storylines going on and one is like her childhood leading up to the present moment and the other one is like the present moment that she's living in and it's really satisfying when they like come together. Like, oh, that was so satisfying. Um, but you learn about her upbringing, her family life and you really kind of find out why she is the way she is and why she thinks about herself and relationships the way that she does and um, you follow her throughout her move to London and her brief stint working in Paris as a nanny and she meets a guy in London and they fall in love and he moves to Barcelona and they try and make it work um, but within that there's just so much emotion there's so many it's just really scenic and I don't mean that as in like just like landscapes but just like she drops you in a scene so well like you can smell and taste and hear and feel everything that is going on in a scene when she's writing and the only thing that bugged me like a little bit was the protagonist I started to get like really irritated with her because it was almost like she was getting in her own way so much and I started to not feel sorry for her or I felt less sympathetic towards her because I was just like go to therapy like get some help like you're obviously not doing it in your head by yourself like you need somebody else to help you probably a licensed professional just to like help you get through those thoughts and that's not a bad thing I would recommend if you just want like a book that you can devour in one go it was definitely that kind of book and salt water is really really great i would highly recommend that um she still feels like an outsider among her fellow students when things come to a head lucy takes off for ireland piecing together family stories and trying to gain a sense of who she really is 
and that really is what this book is it's like piecing things together and I would say get salt water over milk teeth a little content warning for milk teeth um that I kind of wish I knew before I started but once I got stuck in I was like finishing the book um I would just say be sensitive to that if you like struggle with um disordered eating because there's a lot to do with that in it and yeah like really not doing a good job of holding this camera it's just my phone so it's not even a good camera mm. so the book i'm reading just now shock horror was written by a man um i'm reading immortality by milan kundera oh actually let me just get it for you because i really again i really like the cover so this isn't something that i just decided to pick up for myself this was recommended to me we can do this um let me just go get my cup of tea because yes <laughs> okay so um yeah this book was recommended to me by a new friend uh he was saying that a book that really affected him lately was immortality by milan kundera and I was like, I've never read any Milan Kundera. And I'd never even heard of Immortality. The only Milan Kundera that I'd ever heard of was The Unbearable Lightness of Being. And I hadn't even read it, but I went on World of Books and was searching through and I found it. And so I ordered it and it came with a different cover. And usually I hate when that happens because I'll usually like order the cover that I want because <laughs> I want a cover that I like, but none of the Milan Kundera ones have nice covers, in my opinion. Like those like outline drawings, I I hate them. But I got this cover and I actually really, really like it. It's it's odd. Yes. It's an interesting cover. And I'm not that far into it, maybe only 57 pages in, so really not that far, but it's good. It's very thinky um i'm excited to see where it goes yeah i'm excited to see what it has in store for me and um when i was ordering that from world of books i also got the unbearable lightness of being because it actually turned out that a lot of people really really love that book so i was like why not i'll get it and then i got sleepless nights by elizabeth hardwick which i have been really wanting to read anyway so i'm looking forward to that um also i've been listening to this podcast recently that i really really love and want to recommend to you um because my flatmate recommended it to me um maybe like a month ago or something and i've listened to almost all of the episodes now there it's just so good so it's called overthink it's hosted by two professors philosophy professors and the range of topics they discuss like so much and there's some really really good ones what episodes would i recommend um i mean all of them <laughs> they actually did a four-part series on intimate relationships and they were marriage monogamy open relationships and polyamory and that was so interesting so 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 interesting there's an episode on antinatalism which was very thought-provoking the hookup culture one was a really good listen especially because it just spoke about things that like i really relate to so the radical casualness of everything these days and i find that really hard because i like automatically have feelings and thoughts and emotions about everything like I have feelings about everything and so this like culture of radical casualness does not does not sit well with me. I find it really hard. So it was just really interesting to hear them speak about that and how it relates to hookup culture. Oh, a really, really good one was art as commodity. Um like that just gets you raging about capitalism. The ghosting one was really good. If you have ever ghosted someone, I would listen to that and like learn from it i've never ghosted anybody but i have been ghosted and listening to that podcast was just quite validating if you're a podcast person and you're looking for recommendations i would highly suggest you listen to overthink 
it is great and as someone who overthinks everything like I just really enjoy having Ellie and David in my ears like overthinking everything and discussing it and just bringing so much sense to stuff that can just go on in your head sometimes so I will link them downstairs and then speaking of podcasts this morning when I was uh, making breakfast I had on a podcast and it was oh my god what was the name of it sorry I I'm not remembering anything today um let's see I think I sent it to Ian So the podcast is called Bookworm and it's an interview from 2011 but they re-aired it in memory of Joan Didion when she passed last year and it's an interview with her speaking about Blue Nights which is about the death of her daughter Quintana Roo and I have had that book on my shelf for a while and I really really want to read it but again like I was saying that thing that Ben and I were speaking about where you just kind of put things off because you know you're not ready for the emotional impact they'll have on your life and how much you're going to admire and love them and be affected by them. Blue Nights is another one of those books. Um, but just hearing her speak so thoughtfully and so eloquently and she does a couple of readings from the book and oh my god if yeah I would highly 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 recommend you listen to that if you like Joan Didion because I was incredibly moved by it as I was eating my granola yeah gorgeous gorgeous podcast episode really weird theme song for it though um yeah I really need to read that book I love Joan Didion I've read like most of her work um one of my favorite favorite writers she's just so great yeah yeah I think that's everything that's kind of been going on book wise lately that I can um update you on I did read my first Ane Nin and loved it. Her writing is sumptuous. It is, yeah, really, really good. I will be reading more of her for sure. If you have read any Milan Kundera, like, let me know what you think. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you have an opinion? I want to know. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I love you. What have you been reading at the moment? Deep sea.